is the Glass Cannon Network. No, it's fine. Don't get up. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing, LA? Yeah! Woo! Boston in the house. Oh, man. I am going to wow. lose my voice tonight. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Fired up. Yes. I got to match that energy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! I think a lot of people bought tickets at the door. This is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is way more than was on our sheet this morning. Uh, you know, two nights... From tonight, we are uh, we're sold out in Seattle, and then a uh, yeah, get excited for them. Uh, <laughs> and then a couple months, it's a weird open later, <laughs> we're uh, we're sold out in Indianapolis, and uh, yeah, yeah, we were of course so sold you can't out. Come, <laughs> you can't come. Sorry, <laughs> we uh, we sold out Boulder, Skid's hometown earlier the year. Uh, However, we are not sold out tonight. Yeah, so the, the show will be blacked out in your local market. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Guess the rest of our LA fans are too busy making it big in Hollywood <laughs> to come see the old glass cannon sex. Well, the hell with them. More importantly, I'd like to thank everyone who is here tonight. Yeah. They're making it sound sold out. I'll tell you that much. It really does. And these are people who know that their L.A. dream died years ago. And I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate that. 
It must be such a relief to not to pretend you have to do anything, right? So, <laughs> you got nothing going on. So thank you for, for taking a night off from not getting auditions <laughs> and pretending to write screenplays while you drink wine. <laughs> to, uh, Matthew. <laughs> Enjoy the show. I, I use whiskey. <laughs> I'm always hard on, on the, uh, the people in this business because I uh, spent a lot, a lot of my life in there, but I've accumulated uh, many actor friends over the years, and I, I only wish the best for people. I really do, even though I, it sounds like I don't. However, I'm a human, and sometimes seeing people's dreams shattered is hilarious. Um... <laughs> We, I we think we all enjoy a good social media car wreck. <laughs> there isn't a person in this audience that doesn't enjoy a good social media car wreck. And, and the thing is, you used to be able to come out here and just fail quietly and then go back to the Midwest, <laughs> live with your parents, do dinner theater and nobody knew. <laughs> but now with the Instabook and the Facegram, oh, there's boy. just a trail of tears <laughs> for everyone to see. Just moved to LA. <laughs> Got my first audition selfie. Got a call back. Think this is going to be my big break. And then I'd like to announce my new career as a real estate agent. <laughs> but, this, so uh, Joe just started working for Coldwell Banker. <laughs> The reason I bring this all up is I have a new favorite. Weren't um, you a real estate agent? I, I was, yes. Wait, 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 there were many of us actors doing real estate at the time, but the reason I bring this up is I have a new favorite, because uh, I just love, I mean, I feel bad watching uh, these poor souls crash and burn, but I have a new favorite. This, uh, this, this girl I went to grad school with, she, uh, she, she basically came out here with these pie-in-the-sky dreams, and now she's a certified horse masseuse. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Yes, I, I'm sure it's great. I'm What's sure she loves it. That? There's well, nothing wrong with the horse clear, masseusery. Clearly the, hor clearly the horses need massages, Troy. Why are you against I, No, that? I understand. But it's I'm way just, better than massaging people. Do you know I, how expensive grad school and acting classes are? <laughs> I feel so bad for her parents. <laughs> They're like, so how's, how's old Susie doing in L.A.? <laughs> Did she land any sitcoms yet? <laughs> well, uh, Susie's taking a break from acting. Uh, I believe she beats off horses now. <laughs> All right. Right, honey? All right. Is that what she does? Wait, 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 wait. Isn't that right, wait, honey? Wait, is that what they mean when is they say horse masseuse? I think she masturbates horses for oh, money, right? Oh, oh, oh. Honey, is that right? Mark, she doesn't beat them off. <laughs> I'm gonna call her. I was gonna say, the social media, the social media breakdown has been extended to a bunch of people laughing at her. <laughs> in, I know in Los Angeles, in person. Yeah. yeah, this is the true coda of that story. Is you telling it right now? <laughs> She's and everyone laughing at her. She's fictitious. She's not real. She'll never oh, okay. hear this. Oh, okay. She'll never hear this. I hope. <laughs> Thank God. Um, I've changed the names. Her name isn't really Susie. <laughs> It's Suzanne. That's your go-to. <laughs> She'll see this and be like, oh, couldn't be talking about me. <laughs> I don't know. How do you have a on, on, horse? Oh, 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 I think you don't know what a horse is. Holy shit. Horses Troy. aren't, they don't have like teeth. Like, Troy doesn't them. know what a horse is. Troy, this you is. Troy, you went to Columbia and you still don't know the undercarriage of a horse? <laughs> Furthermore, Troy, Troy thinks that the cow's udders do something else. These he were, thinks that you <laughs> jack off the udders. Excuse he me. Know. Those were the back legs of the horse. What did you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's working his way up. You gotta get in there. Yeah. You guys thought. He's easing the horse into it. Right. <laughs> you know the horses are just like us. At the end, they're kind of looking at the masseuse, looking down at their gigantic situation. I got a knot down there, too, if you'd like to work it out. There's a five in my jeans. There's a tasty Abraham Lincoln in my jeans. Oh, God. If you help me with that knot. Anyways, um, best of luck to all of you if you're still acting. Um, there's a horse in your future. Uh, we... <laughs> I have a BAMP topic, and it's a weird one, and it has that been. That wasn't the topic? <laughs> no. 
No, but I'm glad it fostered discourse. I, uh, <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> Googling horse masseuse, horse yeah, masseuse, please. horse masseuse. Please, this is going to come back. I, I am. Know. I'm like, what do they do? I don't this know. is going to come back to bite me. <laughs> um, there's a... Uh, there's a country song out now that I really like, and it's the type of song that uh, it makes me want to be a better man. Do you ever hear music like that, Matthew, that just touches your soul, and you say, I want to change my life. I'm going to shave my beard. Does it involve horse masseusery? No, no, no. But I do want to write that song. That does sound... <laughs> sounds like... This is uh, it's by Tim McGraw, and it's called Standing Room Only. Does anybody know this song? Any country fans out there? Right, no, fuck this you. Is, you think uh, you're this me? is a big American city. Oh, yeah, I listened to indie yeah. bands. I was at the Viper Room. Um, yeah. We're not doing the show on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> Where there's horse masseuses in the crowd. <laughs> can, I tell you about, can I tell you about this song? It's called Standing Room Only, and the, the premise is like, I want to live a life so when I die, it's standing room only. Oh, What's okay? standing room only? The funeral. The oh, funeral is standing oh, okay. room only. You live a life. So when I die... I felt like the crime scene. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, holy shit, did you see what they did to that guy? Oh my God. Yeah, crowd in, you, can't, you have to look at this. There's no seats left at this crime yeah, scene. Can't, I, I can't see. What happened? Explain it. No, it's the funeral. It's you, you live a life that start, start forgiving and start forgetting. I'm a little worried. Be somebody that's worth Because a lot of our bands are about like death in a long-winded way, and I just, I'm, I'm a little worried about you. Well, I, the reason I bring this up is I think if I were to drop dead today, don't, that is very rude. That is very rude. What, do you think this show's gonna continue without me? <laughs> we don't even have a thing in our contract for if one of us dies. But listen, I, I think that there would be some empty seats. And it's because I... Hold grudges, I, are bitter. I don't hold grudges, but I live in isolation. And COVID and, and moving away, I'm just like in my little hobbit hole. I, I haven't fostered good friendships. I don't think... I, I think there would be a pretty empty funeral if I were to die. That guy ain't coming. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. It's weird they play that at the funeral. It seems, <laughs> yeah. it seems insulting. I have my own set list. It's all, it's all Christmas songs. Um, God, Jesus. Do you think, let me ask you this. You guys think you're so much better than me. You think anyone's shown up to your funeral, Sydney? I wouldn't even come. Oh my God. Here's why I bring this up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have yeah, if you want to start being a better man, treating her more nicely would be a good start. I, I, have, I have plans that day. <laughs> do you think, do you think they'd be standing room only at your funeral? I, you are so silly for thinking I would have a funeral like a, like a freaking noob. What, do they just throw you into the like, sea? It's 2023. I don't have to have a funeral. You know what I'm going to do? Here we go. Are you going to be wrapped in a mushroom net and buried under a tree? No, I read about, I read about that. Oh my God, guys. Here we go. Okay. I'm donating my body to science, but not in the normal way. I'm going to get a museum to agree to have my body in a clear plexiglass coffin with dirt and air filtration so bugs can come in. And they're going to watch me decompose for a contract of five years for natural decomposition. And there's going to be a little video of me from when I'm hot and young. And I'm going to be like, hi, that's my body over there. My name is Sydney. Please enjoy. Uh, I've, uh, yeah. I'll tell you. We could you what. just use this right now so, for the video from well, the video. Even better than yours, you have to fucking buy tickets to see me. Okay. Are you kidding me? Well, now it's definitely not going to be standing room only. And, uh, <laughs> however, that sounds cool, and I think I'll come. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. All right. uh, Joe. <laughs> Only in death will he condescend to, to come to your funeral. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Only I'm, in death will you come to my funeral. It depends. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. It really depends where it's being hosted, what the weather's like, but <laughs> we'll figure it out. If you can make it, no I'll, big deal. I, I have right. three kids now. I'm very busy. Joe, would you, uh, you think a lot of people would come when you die in a couple years? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care. I truly don't care. You don't care? I can't. I'd be dead. But what if you get to look down and be like, You don't, because there's nothing. <laughs> there is nothing! <laughs> that is so bleak. <laughs> that 
That's too bleak in a row. That was good. I think. That, that was, was good. really good. <laughs> well, let's go over to this sunshine table over here. <laughs> uh, Kate. Yeah. A lot of people showing up to your funeral. I'm never gonna die. Here we go. <laughs> oh. I'm living forever. What makes you so sure? Why would I die? She That's hasn't so yet. embarrassing. <laughs> she makes a good point. All right. You get a pass. <laughs> Matthew, I know that you believe in nothing after this and that uh, you don't even, uh, you're not even sad about death. So you won't be sad if I don't make it. I, I'll be dead. I'm with Joe. I honestly don't care. Really? I'm gonna I mean, come you just might, to you. might you. offend my children and my family. Yeah. So, like, tread carefully. Wait a minute. You're outliving me? Yes. You are a very, you, you're a very stressed person. Yeah, but he can do the most push-ups out of all of us. That's true. Yeah. That's you do true. push-ups? Oh, he's sure. pushing up about 86 pounds. That's, That's true. a big difference. That's it's like so lifting two milk jugs. <laughs> <laughs> he can lift the most feathers out of anyone. <laughs> Therefore, logically, he's dying less. Um, all right, so don't worry about it. I, if I come, I come. Skid, <laughs> let's be honest. There's a good chance we're all going to be at yours. Yeah, I, that's true. <laughs> I hope you guys come. I know I'll be the first to go. Oh, my God. I hope Samantha will be there. I, I, hope, I hope she'll be there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's put up with a lot. Uh, I, I hope my sisters will be there and maybe my nephews. Uh, that's why I keep buying them gifts. <laughs> So we'll see. Who do you think will eulogize you? Uh, I'm I'm hoping Barack Obama. <laughs> well, I'm sure will not with me. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. You gotta manifest that. Live so a I life. see what you're doing. You can secret that. Live a life so that Barack Obama eulogizes you at your funeral. There we go. That's what we should all aspire to. That's the second verse. You should listen to this song. It's a really good song. Sometimes I pull over on the side of the road and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do better. This is not unusual, by the way. It is very common for Troy to sit us all down and explain the story of a country song. Yes. And then ask our feelings about it. It's not for show. <laughs> it's happened before. Like, this is before. not the first time this has happened. It's happened on other shows. You've done this. You've said I, this exact thing. I just want to share all forms of art with you guys because no, I really, really like it. only country music. That drive it's, from Charlotte to Asheville. Oh, yeah. The I music. Mean, we listened to Huey Lewis in the News. It was great. <laughs> The whole time. time. <laughs> yes, it was the same six songs over and over. Again. <laughs> the Not CD the power party. of love again. <laughs> the power of well, love. I think you should listen to that song. And uh, now I really want to listen to it. But you know what we're going to do instead? We're going to kind of play Pathfinder. Yeah. <laughs> about tonight. Oh, yeah. So let's, uh, let's get a little recap music. Something that's L.A.-based. Do you have an L.A.-based musician that plays thematic recap music? <laughs> yeah. Randy, Randy Newman. Yeah, Randy, Randy Newman. Newman. Randy Newman. <laughs> get out I my Randy LA. Newman. I love L.A. I love L.A. <laughs> I love L.A. God. Here we go. Oh, God. Um, give me some music. All right, I'm bringing it up. I can't hear it. Bring it up. Wait five shh, seconds. Shh, shh, shut, 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 shut your mouth. Classic, <laughs> classic Randy Newman. Do better. Wait, <laughs> this is a Newman. <laughs> yeah, you can hear the horn section. You can. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell by the chord progression. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> classic Newman. 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 All right. Here's the recap. You ready? Ready. It'll be short and tight. It'll be over faster than a horse's massage. Would you like a towel, sir? No. A beach towel? All right, our folks, come on. It's early. It's late back home. Our party has changed a lot since the first episode of this series that we did right here in LA in 2018. Five years ago, almost five years ago. Who was at the bootleg theater in 2018? Oh, man. Sadly, COVID killed the bootleg, and yet Matthew still lives. But two, Jesus, God. Jesus. Um, but two of the characters 
that were in L.A. in 2018 are still with the party 79 episodes later. Joe's character, Atticus. Can you believe it? And Skid's character, Aldo. Aldo? Yes, Yes, right. Aldo, he's in the And the two of them have essentially spent 80 episodes searching for the whereabouts of one man. A man named Count Hazerton Lowell's the fourth. They know that they used to work for him in some unsavory capacity, but at some point their memories were wiped and he placed them in an asylum. Over time, you've learned that this Count is into some dark and dirty knowledge, that he's traveled far away to the south in search of such knowledge, and that his travels even took him to the dreamlands where he met someone named the Mad Poet who shared knowledge with him that was so powerful, a piece of Lal's mind fractured and remained in the dreamlands. And this piece refers to himself as the Yellow King. As far as you can remember, he looks like Lowell's, but he's very different, because this is not a real person. And up until recently, the Yellow King, who you met, by the way, as Joe pointed out to me earlier. Just also want to clarify, no one in the story is a real person. <laughs> Just for anybody that was, there's a lot of new people here. Not with that <laughs> attitude, Joe. The Yellow King was imprisoned recently uh, on the Dreamland's moon. So, everybody with me so far? I don't really care. Um, well, uh, Atticus and Aldo, along with their new traveling companions, Suki, Eris, and Ethel, went to the moon and broke the Yellow King out of jail. All of you have now boarded a giant flying dinosaur, uh, <laughs> a creature called a sh uh, Shantak. Her name is Sybil. Uh, You've, you've, you've boarded the howdah on her back and you are now heading from the moon back to this desert caravanserai where presumably the Yellow King will now be taking you to the Mad Poet. Because you have walked in Lao's footsteps and procured six out of the seven gifts that Lao's obtained in order to even gain an audience with the Mad Poet. However, moments ago, you were told by one of the wardens of the prison that your pal Eris, played by weird neck girl over here. <laughs> yeah, yes! neck mouth! Kate brought a prop! The neck mouth! I was gifted a neck mouth today. Oh, oh amazing. It's, go it's gorgeous. Uh, 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 we have a neck mouth friend in the audience. It is nice. gorgeous. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. I love Ellie. I love Ellie. <laughs> Just I got a, couple a neck of, mouth. This is my personality now. Just a couple neck <laughs> mouths out on a Thursday night. Uh, well, the warden tells you that your pal Eris used to be a prisoner in the lunar prison. Eris, of course, has no memory of this. The moon beast warden you encountered said they found Eris's body, oddly preserved in the ruins of the city of Sarnath. Now, Sarnath was a dreamland city that you all visited during one of your dreamland excursions. It's there where you met Eris, who had apparently become trapped in the dreamlands after experimenting with some wild magic in her homeland, a place called the Mana Wastes. And I hate when you talk when I'm talking. <laughs> and you fucking do it. Dude, I don't Every need- Every single recap. I don't need the recap, Joe, I was there. Joe, who do you think, <laughs> Joe, who do you think he's talking about? But when you do that, they stop listening. They Hear us, we're talking. Not coming to your funeral. <laughs> Great, now he's gonna kill me. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Tattle tales. Wait, you promise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if you come, a lot of people might not come. <laughs> <laughs> so. This recap has gone to shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many names of weird places, you're not gonna know what the hell's going on. So you met Eris in this place called Sarnath. While you met her there in the dreamlands, you find out that she doesn't belong there. She belongs in your world, but she doesn't know how to get back. Meanwhile, a great old one named Bokrug came into this dreamland city and destroyed it. It was like the apocalypse. So when you die in the dreamlands, you just wake back up. So you all woke back up on your boat, but Eris was with you this time. So something in perhaps meeting her pulled her 
back into your world. However, something in that transition made one of your companions who was locked away in the brig, Halster, disappear. His jail cell was replaced by a chunk of perhaps Eris's homeland, the Mana Wastes. Meanwhile, the Moon Beast tells you that when Eris was a prisoner of theirs, she simply disappeared one day, and all that was left in her cell was chunks of wood that looked like they belonged to a boat and the skeletal remains of a human man. So, you start to put together that when Eris died in the dreamlands with you, she was pulled back into the material plane, but when that happened, a piece of the homeland that she knew came back with her into the material plane, but then it seems that Halster and a piece of the boat went back into the dreamlands and Halster died. Do we, perhaps, have we done DNA testing? We have not. But what's really odd is that are there multiple heiresses? Did Halster's skeletal remains replace some version of Eris that was rotting away in her cell? What is real, what is not, you don't know. But the most important part of all of this is the Moon Beast said that Eris initially tried to escape the Mana Wastes because of her great crimes. So, you've got a 10 hour trip from the moon back to the desert. What are you guys gonna talk about? Stop forgiving and start forgetting. I feel like we're in that like hutch thing and everyone's on one side and then Eris is on the other side <laughs> and they're just staring at each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> before we, uh, just before we get into the role play, I'm down a hundred hit points. Come just... on, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were whispering about. We were trying to figure it out for you, oh, Matthew. We'll you only had a month to figure this out. I'm a fan of the four. I just want to be clear, I'm a fan of the whispering. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's me know. every time. It's every single time. He does it on purpose. <laughs> I hate you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. So. <laughs> what do you guys do? <laughs> anyway. Atticus isn't talking about anything, at least in the early part of the ride, because Atticus is asleep. We're resting. He passed out. It's been a day. Casted every spell in his repertoire and is stupefied too. He's cursed! So he's in bad shape and he just, as soon as that thing gets moving, like you know when you're really tired and you get in a car and it's just like everything just shuts down, like can't keep your eyes open, that's what he does. That happens when I'm driving. <laughs> it's like, we got a four hour drive. Oh, so <laughs> Alright, so Atticus passes out. You're cursed. One of you is doomed as well, I think. That would be me. Okay, but if you sleep, you're doomed, doomed. So. you're doomed will go away. So what are you talking about, if anything? I do. You guys want to do it in character? <laughs> Sorry, I was looking through my, I my items in my bag of holding or whatever. Uh, yeah, we can do it in character. Hello, Ethel. Hi. <laughs> Just checking in, your head is bleeding profusely. I just want to make sure you're still alive. Are you okay? I'm still alive, though I am gripped with thoughts of my own doom and demise. I hear you, I more, hear you. More than usual. That's not good. You're quite sad already. All right, in all seriousness. I'm just thinking about the nature of love, that's all. <laughs> Dear God, and she looks at Eris as he says it. She's like, this is so hard for everyone. This is so awkward. Two people in the party start, you know, getting close. Because, you know, you say things to each other and you think the other person means them like right. the way you mean them. Right. No, of course. A Atticus thoughts, oh, fuck, you're asleep. All right. Um, Aldo, any help? Aldo is just sitting, for anyone who has seen the K-drama, Cunning Single Lady. <laughs> uh, there's a character in that show named Naira, and she has this habit of seething, just like sitting there, just like grinding her teeth and looking super angry. And that's what Aldo is doing right now for the entire trip without speaking. Why is he so angry? Because uh, she killed his best friend, he mm. thinks. Eris. Yeah. I don't know, that maybe, maybe you can't relate, but I, that would make me angry. Yeah. 
Troy doesn't have, uh, how you say, friends? I know, or feelings. I'm just trying to like Depends. frame it in terms that Troy could understand. I'll listen back later, it'll make okay. sense. <laughs> uh, Ethel, I'm able to heal you, but I wouldn't be able to sleep. Not out of caring, like, I just would have to keep healing you for 10 hours. No, I do care, but I, she looks at Eris. What am I saying? This if I'm... Well, uh... I have some elixirs of, of life, Ethel. So she like takes them out and kind of like rolls them over. <laughs> this is so awkward. Not sure who hates me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to feel. <laughs> Says Ethel. <Yeah. laughs> I'll drink the elixirs of life. <laughs> uh, it's a two moderate and one lesser if you want all of them. Oh, I mean, I can, I can treat wounds on you. I just would love to not do it for 10 hours. Because then I don't sleep and then I don't yeah. get spells back. Are you saying I wouldn't be a good hang? That's what I heard. No, no, I'm just, you know, it's been a really... Is there really... something about me and no. the things I talk about that... Uh, Irritate you in some no. way, Suki? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> Imagine a doctor, <laughs> and someone is bleeding to death on a table, and they're like, "Doc, we got to go at this all night <laughs> to save this person's life." And the doctor's like, "I can do 90 minutes, <laughs> and then I have to get my eight hours." Like, if I he's not well by then, I, I can't. I, that's it. I've washed my I hands. I did my best. Yeah. She's not. I need my eight hours. Again, yeah, I again, I will say. I have say, a wedding tomorrow. <laughs> I have to wake up early. I made a cleric. Troy killed her. I made a druid. She's not a cleric. But I can heal you. So take those potions. Let me know where you're at, pimp, doggy. Where you at? Uh, and then I'll, uh, I can get you back up. And then I would like to nap. Take a little nap. I'm also down a little bit. <laughs> I just want to say, the yeah, doctor's yeah, also yeah. bleeding, and the doctor's I'm like, also, I'm also wounded. <laughs> doctor, heal thyself. Yeah. I could, I could, uh, I could try to soothe you a little, Sugi, if you want or not. It's cool. Uh, I would love to be soothed. Honestly, it, it would be really nice to be soothed. She comes over to your side of the touches, whatever room. Touches me. She's like, there, there. Yeah. Pets you. Um, she soothes while I seethe. <laughs> there, there, oh. Suki. Uh, and you get dice, dice, dice. Uh, uh, math, math. Seven points of <laughs> you. This is going to take so long. Thank you. It's better than nothing. Uh, uh, we'll say the Yellow King... Oh, I forgot he was there. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. there too. All right. <laughs> What's he's he there doing? Too to move this along. Uh, <laughs> he nudges Atticus awake. Hey. 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 <laughs> what time is it? Oh, there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Sorry to. Sorry to wake you. Um. Your friends are weird. <laughs> yes. Yes. I know. It's been a very long, very long journey. Uh, are you? Are you going to be prepared to, 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 to take this audience with the mad poet? This is, this is kind of a big deal. Indeed, yes, we will. I have been doing a lot of reading. Laos had a trove of information. Aldo and I have been studying for what seems like months. Uh, we are close, and with the <laughs> gifts we have, he, can, he could not possibly refuse us. And how many gifts was it again? Look. You seem like a nice fellow. Don't get judgy. I just want to make sure that you're you're putting your best. We forward. got six, six out of the out se of seven. out of the seven, six. That should we be missed fine. one, but only because it was in the hands of a god. I'm feeling feeling better. Oh, Ethel, you're feeling well. Yeah, Sugi, you can go to sleep. When I said that that, that uh, idol was in the hands of a god, of course I meant you. Because it was in your hands, you just dropped it. <laughs> when I died... 
if you're going to be technical about it, then yes. Listen, there was nothing in my contract about stealing items from gods. No, no, you're right. And you've been very good about not constantly mentioning your contract. I've worked with a lot of freelancers and it's rather exhausting. What do you know of the mad poet? Only nothing. Good. Um, well, we know, we know, um, well, is, is he the, uh, the writer, if it is a he, the writer of a book, the Necronomicon, is that yes. the mad poet? Laos's knowledge and memories are piecemeal in my mind, so I remember certain things. I believe it was more than a millennium ago, a scholar by the name of Abdul al Hazred rose to prominence as a court poet on the distant planet known as Earth. Whoa. Whoa. You hear Earth. Yeah, Aldo, Aldo. perks up. Abdul traveled wildly, widely into unexplored regions, widely and widely. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Sir, please take Our your seat. Our TSA pre <laughs> He went to many unexplored, <laughs> many unexplored regions, including the empty quarter of the Arabian Desert, wherein he discovered and explored Irem, the city of pillars and the nameless city, all the while accumulating lore that humanity was never meant to know. These hidden cosmic truths eventually drove Abdul insane, and it was at the height of his madness that he scribed this dreaded book of occult lore. It was later renamed the Necronomicon, but it was initially called the Kitab al-Azif, and that book became his most infamous legacy. However, with Abdul's insanity also came power. Power yes. to travel far beyond Earth. Once, while right here in the dreamlands, Abdul met the cunning deity, Nialothotep. And Nialothotep, the crawling chaos, allowed Abdul to glimpse the mad god Azathoth at the center of all creation. And that encounter resulted in a dream duplicate that lived on long past al Hazred's death. In a way, his birth here was similar to mine, though that is where the similarities end. This dream incarnation of Alhazred has lived in isolation in the barren, remote parts of the dreamlands for over a thousand years, constantly reborn as a middle-aged man, following the increasingly rare instances when death attempts to take him. He is known to be haughty and aloof, and prefers to spend his time in contemplation or transcribing the secrets his meditations reveal, only to then destroy those secrets in fits of jealousy, fearing that someday others may read his truths. He is a trickster and does not like his privacy to be interrupted, but he has been known to react favorably to those who come bearing unusual gifts or esoteric knowledge. You say you have six of the seven? Yes, that should be enough, yes. Yes, I'm sure six of the seven will be fine, yes. And he just starts muttering to himself, six. It will have to be, your majesty. Yes. The count The had seventh had, gift is beyond us. The count had all seven, but I'm sure six will be No. <laughs> I do not believe he did. That yes, last did. gift I, was unreachable. I was there. Mechanically impossible. I counted, <laughs> I counted the gifts. There were definitely seven. It's Is there a, anything we have with us that we might be able to uh, fashion a seventh gift? No, or, no. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I have a plus two Vorpal Scimitar I could give him. No, 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 no. We need that. Well, I it's going to disappear when we wake up anyway. I, I could also him. whittle him something. We are never waking up. <laughs> oh, well, I can make him a poppet. Uh, maybe you can whittle something and I'll put a soul in I'd it. I'd say stick with the six gifts that you have. <laughs> Start there and see. Yes, the Yellow King made it clear he is not the yes and type. <laughs> it was a flat no. 
Mr. Gifts? Mr. King, uh, Mr. Yellow. Mr. <laughs> King. Mr. King. That's how you address a monarch. <laughs> please, for sure. please. That's how you. I've never met a, my a, father's a noble Mr. King. in my life. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my father's Wait. Mr. King. You may First call me. First name Yellow. You last may call name me Yellow. King. That's how it works. Uh, excuse me. I have a question for you. Yes. Get to it. <laughs> Unnecessarily rude. Yeah, I know. Why? We have eight, ten hours of this thing. Like, there's no need to rush. We realized in the prison that perhaps if we were to die in the dreamlands, it would translate to our bodies out of the dreamlands. Is that the case? Yes. The uh, woman, Calvetta Bricks, shared this information with you, yes? Thank you. I'm also asking if it carries over until now. Was it a prison thing, or...? Well, for many people who visit here, death is not really death, but uh, an awakening to their home plane, like what you experience. I don't believe that option works for someone like me, as it were. Those like me who were born here just cease to exist. But, yes, I believe she revealed a truth to you. It's not funny. <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm allergic to the bedding in this house. It's just a little sneezy. <clears throat> Good night. No, oh, I'm still answering your question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's very rude to fall asleep during sorry, I thought an you answer took, to a direct you, question. It was a little long-winded. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Yeah, it did go on for a while, but still. You, you took such a pregnant pause. Yes, I, I did. I thought it was over. <laughs> because you were laughing at me. There are people whose powers extend beyond the rules here, and the mad poet is one such person. So wait, so he's unkillable, you're saying? I, I didn't say that. I you want me to that. kill the mad no, poet? I'm <laughs> saying... <laughs> Be clear about what you're asking I'm us. I'm saying that his power is far beyond that of mortals and most gods. The energy he exudes will no doubt bend everything you know of this place. You say you procured six out of the seven gifts, right? Yes. You don't have to say it like that. I'm sure that. that will be enough. <laughs> I'm sure that will be enough, but I, I, I urge you to treat him with the utmost of respect. He is not a, a being to be trifled with. And, 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 and yes, I believe, should you perish in his presence, I am certain you will not return to your bodies. Where would we go? <laughs> Where would we go? It's a really good question. That's it's a, a great good question. question. If we're all kind of this Excuse question, me. that's huge. Yeah, we're all kind of thinking it. Well, like, there are some who believe there's an afterlife. Others think you just go to nothing. Either way, I will not come to your funeral. <laughs> uh, your Majesty, yes. I have a bit of an indelicate question. Please, I'm ready. It just, I think it's just going to affect the way we carry ourselves in this meeting. Go on. The mad poet. Yes. His poetry. Is it good? Oh. Uh. <laughs> it is not poetry in the conventional sense. So he that is, means no, this right? Is a no. It's this is a no. It's, a no. it's bad. Okay, well. Does he space everything out on the page to make it interesting? But then when you read it, you're like, that's nothing. That's, that's nothing. I'm going to let you yeah. judge for yourself. I think that everyone, everyone is allowed to do their thing. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Does anybody else need healing, though, before I actually... So I'm actually pretty tired and hurt. <laughs> I yeah. was in solitary confinement for weeks. You ran from the fight. You didn't get hit at all. I know, but I scraped my knee on the prison floor. <laughs> Could you take a look at it? And he lifts up his... Pantaloons. <laughs> Pantaloons. It looks, it Would doesn't, you? it is not even a scratch. It might be a bruise. It hurts so Do much. you want me to take a look? No, I want her to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll put a band-aid on it, make it better. Is that good? Are we good? Yes, that's better. Okay. He puts his pantaloon down. I'm tired. Gonna go sleep <laughs> on that side. He's sucking his thumb in the corner. <laughs> this guy is weird. 
<laughs> this, this figment of someone's brain is weird. <laughs> All right, anything else you want to do on this 10-hour trip? I, yeah, I just want to seethe for, <laughs> for nine hours, whatever's left. Okay, but in a way that you can still rest and recover and yeah, make your... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sleep and dream about seething Okay. as I'm um, asleep. Atticus is going to, you know, uh, doze for a little while longer, and then he's going to wake back up again, and there's just these things bothering him about this upcoming encounter, and he, he wakes up the Yellow King. No, oh, about me. <laughs> <laughs> this mad poet, does he uh, assume danger at all costs? Uh, is he so arrogant that he feels he, he could not be attacked. What I mean is, will there be some sort of defense mechanism, guards, anything like that? Or will an audience be relatively easy? Just the success of it in question. I, I do not know for sure. He probably already knows of your coming. He can see it. So he would not fear us? Merely no. laugh no, at us? No, no, no. And, and the land around him is infected by his presence, which makes me all the more certain uh, what your friend had mentioned, that uh, your death would be... Hook shoe, hook shoe, hook shoe, hook (laughs) shoe. She sleeps like an angel. Permanent. (laughs) Understood. And he's just, yeah, paranoid uh, and frightened, and he goes, you know, into his... Uh, spell book and, and begins preparing his spells and it's just hard to think about what to prepare for this encounter you know yeah. um, but he's going to err on the side of violence a lot of violence because he knows he's preparing spells for a podcast right all right so you continue flying from the moon to this caravanserai, you heal up, you rest, you seethe. <laughs> and uh, eventually, Sybil lands. Like, uh, instead of landing on the second floor where you met her, she lands, uh, maybe the Yellow King directs her over there. And uh, she lands in front of the building. And uh, you all disembark and wave goodbye. And, and Sybil turns and says, Thanks for the lasagna. You're very welcome. And then she flies off, hoping that she will reunite with her brother someday. And the Yellow King is straightening his cape. He looks like a fool, like he's dressed in a curtain, a yellowed curtain, and he's just trying to straighten his hat and everything. He says, I, I must thank you once more for rescuing me, though there are days I grow weary of this place. I thought I would spend the rest of my life in that quiet cell on the moon. And then he reaches into his cape, and almost like a magic trick, a a tray comes out with a full tea set on it. And he places it down on the ground, and as he does, there's a table there that wasn't there a second ago. And he's like, yeah. And he pours five cups, and and one for himself, a sixth cup. He pours six cups. And he says, uh, yeah, uh, the, the journey ahead uh, of us will take us directly into the most extreme heat of the desert. Uh, drink this, and you will be protected from the, from the severe heat for at least 24 hours. Trust me, it is, it is far too hot. Drink my, drink my fucking tea. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks at Suki. I made this one special for you. Man. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me take a look at that first. I was going to swap them, <laughs> Princess Bride style, with yeah, all the I'm drinks. So, I've thrown a, some, a custom to Iocane powder. <laughs> I would like to do an alchemical lore check on this tea. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. 29. Ooh. Um, yeah, you feel pretty confident that it is a strong tea of, uh, like, Endure Elements to be all able right. to actually withstand the heat. Well, this is chamomile. You can drink it. <laughs> Safe. This is very and kind, you, your yeah, majesty. Stick your pinky Thank out you. like he's doing. I'm very proper. Yeah. Uh, a toast to uh, the most important day of your life. Yeah. 
Wouldn't it be so funny if this tea killed us? That'd be awesome. It'd be so dope. Be what great. a funny way to die. It would be. <laughs> what a silly way to die. He yeah. waits a little too long staring at you. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> and you start walking from the caravanserai into the desert. <laughs> Do you got some good desert music there, O'Brien? Of course I do, dude. A little Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia shit? <laughs> Any Randy Newman desert tracks? <laughs> Perfect. Yep, that's desert yeah, that's, music. Yeah. The silence of the desert. Yes. Yeah. The vast, yep. unending silence. Yes. Yeah, I hear the sand. It's the great. Yep, there it is. A desert wind. You walk for hours through the desert, taking your shirt, wrapping it around your head, doing all that desert stuff. Yeah. All Real those desert things. shit. All this guy desert, knows about the desert. Desert cliches. Like hardcore desert yeah. shit. Hardcore Real desert fucking sh- desert shit, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You dig a hole in the ground and start fucking it. <laughs> That's right. Desert That's shit, right. man. Desert shit. Been out here too long, man. We That's all, what I do in the desert. We all saw Dune. You guys remember that scene? Yep. Where they oh, dig yeah. a hole in the ground no, and we have not all yep. seen Dune, love, Sydney. Oh, sorry, Kate. I forgot. It was a deleted scene. <laughs> yeah. Deleted scene. When Ma, you didn't see when Mao Deeb fucks the desert? <laughs> That's right. When you really love the desert, you know, you... The whole Sometimes. movie's an allegory. I mean, it's like it very is. interesting. Right? It's like, take my water. Yeah. Oh. It's a really funny Dune joke. That's a really funny Dune joke. You should, you should uh, explain to them why. Really funny Dune joke. Um, so, yeah, you do all that stuff for hours. Right? Just occasionally. Hours and hours. <laughs> the Mad King is instructing us on the, <laughs> the, the way of the desert. It's very, very R rated. And, uh,. The Yellow King is, is very nervous the whole time, and, he, and he's very talkative, uh, asking you about your dream quests and, and sort of making you relive everything that you went through when you went to all of these strange places, all these courts, the drug den and everything, re- retrieving these gifts. And you realize that he's just trying to like fill the space with words because he's nervous, and he's constantly saying, it's, it's six gifts, right? You got six? He's, he's constantly needling you about that. Yeah. Not seven, right? Six. Um, Six hours you're walking through the desert, and up ahead. An hour for every gift. An hour an for hour every gift. gift. <laughs> up ahead you Just see. Thank God this isn't Hanukkah. We'd be out here. <laughs> <laughs> you see a huge dune, a huge sand dune that actually obscures uh, your view beyond it. Um, and the Yellow King uh, stops maybe 100 feet away from the dune, and he uh, points, and he's like, um, just past this, this dune here is the Mad Poet's Oasis. I can accompany you no further. Why not? Those are the rules. <laughs> However, I will wait for you here should you, when you return. Right past that dune. Ethel buries his hatchet in the in the, in the oh, yeah. <laughs> Are we supposed to do that, right? No. <laughs> I'm kidding. You were the seventh gift. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. We Hold don't want you the head of a king. This dragon is corpse by the blood over the sand. Unless, I think this is a good idea. Those the rules, yes. A kingly gift indeed. (laughs) Just put him over there with the other kings. Yeah, throw him over the rest. Swing him onto the pile. Just a pile of dead kings. Throw him on the pile. You solved my riddle. Put your coats in the bedroom, Will. (laughs) You're all staring at this dune completely obscures the horizon and the land beyond it. It stretches half a mile wide. Um, It's climbable. And he's just pointing. And then his hand goes down. 
<laughs> Can I just point out that this gentleman in the front row is wearing a shirt that just says Arrakis? I know. Oh, <laughs> hell yes. It it's amazing. House of Trades, hell yeah. He's drawn to the shirt. This is perfect. It's perfect. Did you know this was going to happen? <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess I you can just read that. what's going to happen if you want to. Like, uh, So, yeah, Atticus is like, well, then let's be done with it. And he begins walking across the sand toward the dune. And if no one follows him, he stops and says, Ethel, get in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel jogs up, kicking up sand behind him as he goes. <laughs> Uh, we'll begin moving toward the dune. You begin moving toward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> toward. Do, is dune. it a dune like we can, we can go around, or does it look like we go up? And Gotta over? go up that oh, dune. I love it. Love it. I love going up a dune. Love going up a dune. Yeah. You gotta really picture it. I can. Yeah. Pic- I can see this so clearly. Yeah. Just the desert music really helps me. And that really yeah, yeah. takes you there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it is, like, I love Lawrence of Arabia. Like, I love that movie. And yeah, right. And just picturing, like, I love, I love yeah. the desert stuff. Like, that's great. As I mean, you're walking up that dune, your foot sinking further in and the yeah. sand falling out behind you and yeah. slipping almost as you try to scale it. It's awesome. I yeah. see it as the wide, the wide shot cinematic one of, like, all of us in a line, you yeah. know, silhouetted. And you see our footsteps. And, the like, the dresses line. are flowing in the wind and Pepsi, yeah, yeah. my snake is flowing in the wind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, he can travel on a, sh- on, a, on, a on an arrow, so he yeah. does. I wear him like a scarf, and he just like flaps. Yeah, I love this city, this sweeping wide shot of yeah. all of you walking up and the it's king. It's like Lawrence of Arabia or Journey, the video game. <laughs> yes, Journey, the video game. Can we do one of those shots, please, where it's so far away that you have to, for a second, you're like, where are they? You know, we, it's yeah, like you're yeah, so yeah. T- to see the scope of the landscape, yeah, like it's we so we impossibly did, massive. We didn't sell enough tickets. We oh. can't. Uh. <laughs> we'll save that for the Seattle show. Okay. <laughs> it's not their fault. They came. Yeah, yeah. wait. You can't blame them for Maybe people who bring didn't come some here. more friends next time. They, right. they brought they brought their significant others who don't listen to the show and are here under protest. I yeah, can't believe that's true. you've yeah. gotten them to boo us like four separate times. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> there wait, still are people emailing me about what you said about Boulder and Denver. <laughs> <laughs> still people are angry. Explain to them the making water joke. Okay. Um, <laughs> You climb the dune. It takes us so long to do anything. You <laughs> climb the dune. I assume that we're right where you expected us to be at this point in the <laughs> show. <laughs> 902, <laughs> perfect. Yep. Nailed it. Uh, you Sorry. climb the dune, and when you get to the top, you see there are two other massive dunes ahead. Oh, no. Oh, for God's sake. No, just Come listen. On. Listen, listen. But okay. it's, it creates a valley oh. below. And there's a, a glistening pool in the valley between these three dunes. So the other two dunes are like off to the side. You don't need to climb them. You're gonna be climbing down into this valley. And the reason you're gonna climb down into this valley is next to the glistening pool is a small wooden hut. And on the way to the hut, the only other thing that dots the landscape is an immense tree with these large lumpy fruits that are hanging uh, near the ground. It's large enough that it gives shade to both the pool and the hut. And right when you crest the dune, there's this sweet smell emanating from the oasis. No. And Aldo and Atticus, you have this out of body moment where this seems so familiar to you. What? 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 Like we've been here before. Have we been here before? What Are? do you do? Well, first Atticus is going to look for imperfections in the scene from a, an illusionist standpoint, thinking perhaps a mirage. This is classic. Right. So he's going to look for uh, any clue or indication that what he's seeing is not really there. Okay, um, give me a perception check. And also... How about a will save? Yeah. No, I want a perception check. Okay. Okay. 
24. You're a smart guy. Good Thank character, you. not you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, he, and he's not even that smart. But you think to yourself, had you not drank that tea, then there would have potentially been some sunstroke that would have you know, possibly created these mirages. Mm -hmm. You don't see anything in the landscape that screams illusion to you, and you also know that you're really not under the effects of the environment uh, to create that uh, you know, brain situation. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's why he's Ladies the best. Ladies and gentlemen, master That's improviser, <laughs> Troy <laughs> Valley. I feel like it's a brain situation. That's it is why undoubtedly a brain situation. Yeah, it's clearly a brain situation. You sound situation. like a doctor. It's a brain <laughs> si I'm sorry, ma'am. It's, it's a brain situation. <laughs> like a passage from Tolkien himself. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? What? Can we identify the smell? No. Okay. Well, wait, it's hold on. It's just sweet. Do we do we smell it? We all smell it. You all smell okay. it. Okay. What's that smell? It smells sweet. It smells sweet. Is it candy? Is, is it, it candy? Is it is it the 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 water? Is it the water? Is it Let's fresh, go find out. Fresh muffins. Uh, Atticus will start walking down. Me Atticus. too. Yeah. Aldo. Me I'm three. sticking I close by Atticus. Suki. I feel strange. Yes. If we've seen this before. I feel stronger. No. I just feel familiar. This is something familiar. Yes. Suki says to Eris, Hell yeah, this is a mirage. Let's go. This is yeah. going to be hilarious when we get down there. This is going to be so fun. She's just happy someone's talking to her right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go. No one has talked friend. to Eris for the past nine and a half hours. Hey, Suki, Suki didn't know about any. I mean, she doesn't have any allegiance to anything really with you guys and so yeah. you're watching you two like you guys have your secrets too we totally you look do like yeah you guys don't place, talk but about stuff I'm no but one neither one of us killed either one's I best friend it. you don't know that i killed someone you also don't know that you didn't kill each other's best friends i don't know that for sure but i'm a lot more sure that she killed my best friend than i'm sure that i didn't kill either one of our best friends <laughs> i think that clears it up yeah everybody roll a perception check as you approach <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what did everybody roll for their perception? 32! 32 for Aldo Kizumi. What do you make of this brain situation? 32, huh? 32. 20. I'm having a real brain situation over here. <laughs> uh, 21. 23. I'm way too into having a friend right now. Okay. Yeah, ni so 19. Suki's like asking Eris about Alaric, trying to see if she like remembers anything from the prison. So she is not looking. She's just like kind of trying to get gossip out of you. Okay. You start coming down and there's really only one route, it seems, that's safe uh, coming down the dune because certain parts of it are steep. So you're coming like around uh, towards the south of the pool next to the tree, kind of looping around in the direction of this hut. And all of you except Suki are are, are sort of mesmerized by this tree, the, the fruits that are hanging from it. They're, they're so strange looking, and the closer and closer you get, you realize that they're, they're not lumpy fruits. They're actually human heads. Oh, oh so cool. <laughs> and if that wasn't, if that wasn't uh, bad enough, you realize you recognize all of the heads. Every oh. single on head. This tree. We all recognize? Let's go to the map real quick. Oh, okay. Let's go to the motherfucking map. Whoa. Ooh. Joe, show me the map. Show me the map. Ooh. It looks really nice. You like that? That's Davy yeah. Maps. Oh, don't Davy Maps! Oh, nice. Yeah, Davy Maps! Let me hard. show you this situation oh. here. Oh. This is what it looks like. <laughs> oh. Oh my oh, God! Wow. Oh wow! 
You see every Wait. single one of your traveling companions. It's everybody from the tour! This Holy is the shit. Image. Every single person that has been a part of your party since the beginning of this adventure. Jesus Christ, Angeline. Angeline! Angeline! Wow. Crushing it. Who's that guy on the bottom? I don't remember you guys talking about him. <laughs> Hardy har. He looks kind of like a loser. He's a real. <laughs> he's a real loser. And you see this, and it is so jarring because each of you see not only friends from your past, allies from your past, you see yourselves up there as well. And that sweet, sweet smell that you've been uh, smelling since you crested the dune becomes more powerful and more powerful roll for initiative. Oh! Oh! Oh, no! I was not expecting that! Shit! Are you ready, LA? (laughs) Fired up! Good crap. Dude. They are small, Bungle but they are mighty. Bungle bees on the tree, man. Bungle bees on the tree. Bees on Everybody's the tree. on the tree. Everybody's on the tree. Pepsi's on the tree. You're on the tree. You're on the tree. tree. You're on the tree. <laughs> You're on the tree. <laughs> Aldo, what did you get for a niche? Oh, hey, geez. I got a uh, 18. 18 for Aldo. 18 for Aldo. Uh, Ethel Merman. 18 for Ethel Merman. Oh, gross. Natural three. Oh, dear. What about you, neckmouth? 19. 19. Oh, wow. man, these are terrible rolls. These are, uh, this is a good time to roll shitty. Sure. Uh, what about Atticus? Atticus, 24. Mm. There you go. Middle of the road. Suki. 25. <laughs> the highest, but not, not great. Real, real bad. Question, did yes. we get a hero point at the beginning of the session? What do you guys oh, think? Wait. Should I... Let me ask you this. Who doesn't want me to give them a hero point? I think there were more people that didn't. I heard more nays, I think, yeah. You know what? I'm trying to be a better man so people will show up for my funeral. You all get a hero point! You get a hero point! You better show up. Uh, I'm being frozen. Who am I kidding? Uh, uh, Troy, real quick, though. Can you change that to a 27 for me? I forgot I have incredible initiative. So Your initiative you. is incredible. Thank you. 27, huh? Uh, it's too late. I already put it in. Okay. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, the tree. Everybody roll a will save. What? Yup. Yup. <laughs> this is gonna be bad, man. I don't even want to roll it. I don't even want to roll it. I don't want to play. <laughs> I don't want to play. God damn. <laughs> stop forgetting. Stop forgetting. What did you roll, Aldo? Uh, natural one. Oh, oh no! The most natural of ones. Would you like to use the hero point you got seconds ago? I will. I will. All right, natural seven. Oh, uh, that is a 22. Okay. <laughs> Ethel? 25. Ugh. A little bit better. You guys stink. Uh, Urus? I got a natural 20. Oh! oh! For a 35. Would you like to use your hero point to the roll? You know what? You're you definitely are nicer lately. Uh, no. Did you hear that? <laughs> I think somebody's coming to my view. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, wait for you because you look sad. Uh, Suki. What's Thirty-five. Your... Thirty-five for Suki. Hey, girl. Hey. Okay, and uh, Joseph. Twenty-four. Okay. Oh, that's not bad. That's not it's bad. It's a definite fail. Okay. It's trying to be nice. Critical success over here. You are completely unaffected. And you are the only one that is unaffected. Oh, no. Now, Suki, you succeeded. Okay. You are distracted by the tantalizing scents that are coming off of this weird head tree. Sounds accurate. You are stupefied one. Oh, fuck. For one round. Uh, Oh, Oh, great. This isn't going to matter. It's not terrible. 
This isn't going to matter at all. And the rest of you failed. That would be Aldo, Ethel, and Atticus. You are stupefied, too. Oh, come on. Uh... And, oh, this is so bad. In this round, you have to move to the closest square adjacent to the tree via the most direct route possible. Oh, no. Bypassing any obvious hazards or enemies that are in the way. So you have to use a move action or two, however it is, to get as close as possible on your round. And you are stupefied too. I'll allow it. What if I'm already stupefied too? Then... How, wait, that one lasts, that's a curse. That lasts forever, right? Until, re- yes. until you get restoration. So that, that one supersedes this. So you still have to move towards it, but you don't become like stupefied four. And you're stupid Already too. stupefied too. Okay, so you're We're stupefied. already real dumb. Okay. <laughs> real, real dumb. And stupefied has some other bullshit to it, right? It's bad for casters. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't call yeah. it bullshit. I call it game-breaking awfulness that uh-huh. ruins your character so you can't yeah. have fun anymore. Some yeah. people might call it that Anytime as well. Anytime you cast, you have to do a flat check. Yeah. Flat forget yeah. check. It encourages you to not play your game. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, the tree will then move. Whoa. Oh, no. Let's it take one can. more. It, one more look at that. Oh, God. Oh. oh. Look wow. at Centaur King of the Zoogs. Up uh. top there. Is, is, is Eris's hair wrapped around... Ethel's neck on the tree? <laughs> sure is. Oh, uh, wh- wow. I didn't think anyone knew about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Round one has begun. It is now Suki's turn. Suki, Suki. you succeeded, but you did not critically succeed. What do you do? Suki. Suki. Um, I think Suki was distracted. She had terrible perception. Uh, and I think she kind of turns around and sees that this tree is now moving. Not good. And she is going to draw her short bow. And she is... Go- Let me just see if I can reach it, though. Hopefully I can. I Kay. can. Oh, shit. No! I'm naked behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. Don't look at me. I'm shirtless. <laughs> Oh, I just have like a Playboy back here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> when it's their turn, I it's pleasure my notes. myself. It's my notes. <laughs> Get out of here, you hippie. <laughs> you hippie. Turn to hippies, always Stay looking at you on my, my screen. Lawn. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Get a job in a haircut, you. <laughs> Stay. Uh, so. What are you I'm, doing? Is that I'm, your turn? <laughs> uh, I rolled my short bow, and I only got a 20 to hit. Only got a 20? Are you being funny? I don't know. It's a tree. It's a moving tree. Things could get weird. That is a miss. You need to do better. Okay. I figured, so thank you. Is that your turn? Um, that's my first action. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to move. I'm going to use my move. And I'm going to move away from the tree. Drawing your bow was your first action. You're right. Thanks so much, Troy. Uh, I can still do this as my third action sure. after I fired. And I'm going to move away from the tree. Because uh, I need to get out of the cluster. Because it's going to come over and hit all of us. Okay. Three sad actions later, it's Atticus's turn. Oh, oh wait. And I'm not bad. stupefied anymore. Yeah, but yes. Because right. it's this round. Oh, no, it's... If it's you just said to me something pre-show. Well, you're stupefied for one round. Yeah. Then you're stupefied until its next turn when it starts. It's, it's, it's next turn. Beginning okay. of its next turn. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Joseph, Atticus D. just pushes lightly Ethel to the side. It's just like, and he's looking at these heads, particularly the orc uh, head, and it's just like, it's so, it's so strong. It seems so, and so handsome, so, so powerful. If uh, only we could get to know him. If only him. I could be <laughs> yeah. within the aura of that power. And he begins walking mindlessly towards the tree. You said that I have to use all possible actions to get to the tree. To get as close to it as possible. So if you can do that in one action, then you still have two actions left. But if it takes you two actions to move adjacent to it, okay. you got to take those two. Great. So I can get there in one action if I'm not mistaken. 
uh, playing by the rules. I'm not mistaken. I can get there in one action. Okay. And he walks up to this thing, but he's not completely out of his mind. It draws him close, and he sees it. It looks rather terrifying. So he is going to try to become invisible. So he walks up to it, and then he's going to try to do this trick that he uh, used to do as part of his shows to just try to kind of vanish. Um, but I have to roll a flat check. So first flat check, and I fail. What did you roll? I rolled a natural six. I needed a natural seven. Would oh. you like to use your bottle cap? <sighs> use it. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't say. What do you guys think? No? They're saying right. no. Big they thumbs say down. No. This is awesome. It's like the price is right. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lower! Lower! <laughs> Lower! Um, so yeah, he, he, casts, <laughs> he casts Invisibility Cloak, and he's like, <laughs> you didn't think of this, did you, tree? <laughs> And then he's just still standing there, completely <laughs> visible. Yeah. And that is the end of his shitty, shitty turn. Brutal. Brutal. All right, well, you don't have to do that next round, but you obviously remain stupefied from your curse. Eris, what do you got? Oh, God. So, yeah, I'm seeing everyone look kind of silly, walking towards the tree. Atticus is already there, so I feel like flesh wall is not a thing. You uh, and your flesh wall. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going to cast uh, Haste on Ethel. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, that's what he's Describe it. Describe it? How do you cast it on him? Well, I've got a 30 feet ring. <laughs> <laughs> My hair extends and wraps around Whoa. his neck. Whoa. And it tugs a little tight, but not too tight, where it's not fun still. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 you're hasted. And I want to roll some sort of knowledge to know, like, does it have a weakness to anything? This I don't want to waste my time. I feel like this is your first knowledge check since we've begun playing I together. know. I forget. Give me a no- big fan of knowledge checks. Thank in you. The yes. Oh. Thank yeah. you. Uh, I love it. All right. Uh, you got three actions. Let's use them. What kind of knowledge would you like to roll? Maybe nature or dream lore? Or occultism? Uh, I also have lore wilderness. Yeah, let's try lore wilderness. This looks like a naturally occurring tree. Yeah. <laughs> this is the equivalent of, is, it, is that a zebra? <laughs> you know what? Maybe I'll never roll a knowledge check ever again. Let's do, <laughs> let's do occultism because clearly this is there's something weird going on here. and maybe <laughs> Clearly there's something weird yeah, going on Yeah, I'm wondering if there's something I, odd you're happening. You're not 100% sure, but there's something weird happening. We're all so dumb. We're just like, I know. something's we're, we're not a, we're right. We're not a smart group. That's a 25. 25, eh? Okay. You want to know about weaknesses. Uh, 25. It is weak to fire. Fire. And because it's a tree, axes. (laughs) Oh! oh. (laughs) Ethel, this is the perfect enemy for you. Can you please whittle me a thing out of that? Cut it down. Chop that tree down. What? Babe. <laughs> stupefied. He's stupefied. Yeah. What? You're so enamored with the wood, I can tell. I am enamored with the wood. Not that kind of wood! We need a new, we need a new sexy song. I know. Uh, <laughs> I t- it, you know, it's so funny because we were saying, like, I should do sex and candy, and it would have been awesome earlier when you mentioned can't, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mind me. You know what, Skid? Save it for Seattle. Okay. Uh, five, five, <laughs> five booze. Save the new stuff for Seattle. Um, <laughs> this is just a repeat of the last combat. Uh, all right, so that's what you learned. Do you have any actions left? Nope. All right. Awesome. It is Aldo's turn. Aldo. You are stupefied too, and you must rush this tree. Okay, so I have to get, spend as many actions as it takes to get next to it? Yes, sadly. Okay, all right. Just this round. I think this is two actions. Yeah, I'm gonna have to spend two actions to get up there. So Aldo, in some kind of trance, I guess, 
like runs up there and he's just like, oh, I don't like this tree, but I can't resist it. And with his final action, he is going to throw alchemist's fire at the tree. Ooh, baby. Yeah. Uh, that is a 27 to hit. Yo, that is a miss. Okay. All right. Uh, so it fight. still yeah. takes four points of splash fire damage. Okay, and because it is weak to fire, it certainly takes more than that. So all of maybe all of the heads open their mouths and scream <gasps> simultaneously. <laughs> you see your own face inches away from you scream <laughs> like this emotionless Man. scream as it gets hit by fire. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite horrible. Yeah. Uh, Ethel. Finish up the round for us. And also, Aldo and Ethel rolled the same initiative if you guys choose to switch your position. I don't really care. Um, here's my question. Okay. I have to use... I, it will take me two moves to get to the tree. Okay. Would it be not in the spirit of the effect if no. I did a sudden charge? Which would get oh. which would be the fastest path to the tree oh. and give me a strike as part of those two actions. Oh! Yeah. Yeah. You're all, you're all players. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> what is Skit explaining? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just excited that the volume came back up on yeah, the drops. That's nice. <laughs> I like that. So can you sudden charge? Let me read this again. This guy says yes, so we should just listen to it. Uh, the creatures who was the closest square oh, right. via the most direct. Matthew, you rolled a hit. Direct route possible. <laughs> sure. Sure, yeah. Yes. I hope you fumble and have trouble sleeping tonight. Uh, 26 to hit. Miss. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> Ethel's going to climb the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to climb the tree. You're going to climb the tree? The yeah. tree full of heads? The tree full of heads. What's your goal here? <laughs> to get into an advantageous position to chop at the tree. All right, roll to climb the <laughs> fucking tree. <laughs> Bet you didn't think this was going to happen, Troy. Trying to be more open to dumb ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stupefied, and I also rolled a natural two, so it's a 21. So you've fall prone. Uh, actually... I think you do fall prone. Critical failure. Uh, is it a critical? A twenty-one is a critical. Oh, twenty-one. No, you just look stupid. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> you embarrass yourself. That's Ethel, enough. What are you doing? Also, is this the most agile tree ever? It's pretty crazy fast. Um, All right, and then I have an extra action from haste. So when I fail that, uh, I am going to take another swing with the hatchet. Why not? Yeah, come on. Roll well though. Uh, okay, 30. Hit. Not bad. Still a miss. What the this is the end of book three, folks. What do you want, a 30 AC? Not on my watch. All right, round two. Joe has already checked out, assuming that the fight is impossible. It is, obviously. Because you, at some point, I'm not sure when it happened, you just started making up ACs. I did. <laughs> You were just like, you know what? This is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a great time. <laughs> I know. The tree will cast a spell because that's what this tree can do. I'm a druid and I fucking hate this tree. <laughs> we'll deal with you in a second. <laughs> do you want to take your attack of opportunity as it's casting a uh, spell? I would love to. Okay. I think you're going to miss. I think so too. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, 31. Oh! What did Troy make up? That's a hit. Ah! Uh, uh, this is so much better than esports. <laughs> <laughs> For real. 11 points of axe stem. Yeah! Give it to you. Axe give it to you. Give it to you. Holy shit. And yes, it is vulnerable to axes. Yes. I saw that and I laughed and laughed because you have an axe. 
And it just, again, all the mouths open up and scream. And uh, now it's going to cast a spell. And I've made a nice little template that I'm going to throw on the ground because it's horrible. Hello, template. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's just put it right there. What the? Whoa. Oh, yeah, right on the old map I'm going to put the Ooh. Suki and Eris in these tangling creepers. Oh. Dense, twitching creepers sprout from every surface, even filling bodies of water in the area. Any creature moving on the land takes a minus 10 foot circumstance penalty to its speeds while in the area. Eris and Suki. Minus 10 to your speed! And then there's some other cool stuff that you don't have to worry about right now. <laughs> Tangling creepers. Don't go. No that. rolls involved? No. no saves? No. Not yet. Not ever. Oh. And now, that was three actions. That's how powerful that spell is. You are effed in the A. <laughs> Suki, it is your turn, Suki. Okie dokie, let's find out what's going on. Okie suki. Okie suki. Uh, <laughs> suki, seeing these uh, tendrils, these plants, they're plants? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, it's just, they're like vines. They're like weird vines that are coming up and pulling at you, like going up your leg and starting to wrap around As you. if this has never happened to Suki. Classic. <laughs> She's going to cast uh, Elemental Form and <sighs> Sailor Moon style. I turn into a fire elemental as I spin. Yeah! <laughs> a fire red, elemental? Red glitter everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, read it and weep. Fire. How about a little fire, Scarecrow? Yeah, and, uh, fire, little fire, Scarecrow. Oh. I'm then going to move out of the tendrils. You got anything to do about that? I'm a big fire lady. Don't worry about it. Boop. Okay. I moved out, and now I'm going to move my fire speed. Uh, is that 50 feet? And I'm going to move all the way up to the tree uh, and hopefully protect the boys. Nice. Gotta protect the boys. Gotta protect the boys. Um, all right, so you are a fire elemental. Let me throw one yep. of those up on the old board here. This definitely copyrighted picture oh, I just took. Oh! Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. Do, 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 do. Yeah! Hell yeah! Right. That's what I'll I look like. I'll just put Suki in the pool over here, Oop. and you're there now. Um, all right, so that is <laughs> Fire Suki. Cool. Fire Suki. Fire Suki. <laughs> Fuki. <laughs> Fuki. All right, Fuki. Fuki. Uh, it is Atticus's turn. Uh. <laughs> Atticus. Oh, man. Stupefied. But Stupefied, for real. You don't have to be there anymore if you don't want to. Um, yeah, that's for sure. He's going he's gonna to say, No, no, we come with gifts. We come bearing gifts. Gifts for the mad poet. And he starts like, pulling these things like out of his jacket. Like, destroy us and they will be lost forever. Uh, and he's gonna attempt to see if this is, mentioning the gifts would help the tree stop, basically. Okay. Um, and I don't know if that's a roll or not. Um, no, you're just talking and the tree seems to not care. Okay, in that case, he will, and he will uh, fall back. Um, 30 feet, staying out of those uh, brambles and such. Out of those creepers? Out of those creepers, yeah. Uh, he will fall back and, man, this is bad. Yeah. He will attempt to attack the tree uh, with a spell. So he brings this negative energy into himself. His pursuit of these dark truths and why he's coming to this mad poet has led him to this kind of knowledge that can rot life away from inside of itself. And he's going to cast Enervation Ooh, on the tree nice. to see if he can just rot it out from the inside. This Enner tree of death! What, uh, what kind of save is that? It's a fortitude save. Oh! Oh, shit! I, ro I rolled real bad. <laughs> Must have. 
You take 4d8 persistent negative damage. Oh, shit! As you run from the inside! And you are drained one. Oh, man. Oh. Wow, what a fucking timely spell. Woo! Holy wow. shit. It just starts pulling this negative energy. <laughs> L.A. Joe! L.A. Joe! Boys here and leave nothing for Seattle. Screw it. Yeah. Don't, don't listen to him, Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> LA and Joe. Oh, no, you no, 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 my good shoulder now. <laughs> L.A. Joe with the Natty 19. So 4d8 persistent negative energy damage. Yeah. All right. Yikes. And drained one. And so drained drop one. HP. So my fortitude save will go down. My con base checks will go down. I'll lose hit points equal to my level. Uh, and my max, the drain value. which is one. Yeah. Um, and your maximum hit points go down. Holy shit. Well, maybe he'll get to rest for eight hours, and then my drained value <laughs> will go down. <laughs> Villains never get to rest. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Hell of a round that's there. The whole, that's the whole point behind the, the giving tree. It's true. <laughs> that's very... That's an astute observation. Yeah. That's good. Fuck that tree. Shell Silverstein up here. Actually, no, fuck we're, that kid. The kid's really mean. Yeah, fuck that kid. That kid's an asshole. fucking kid. Oh. That tree gave him everything. <laughs> oh, God. You piece of shit, kid. Fuck you. <laughs> can I take your branches to make a house? No. <laughs> um, this should have been the tree you. in that story. This, this tree. Yeah. That would have been better. Uh, it's Eris' turn. I've lost all control of this fight. <laughs> All right, um, so I got a negative 10 to my move speed, which means I can move 15 feet, so I'm going to take three little square steps here. I'm still within the tendrils, but whatever. I'm within 30 feet of both Aldo and Ethel. So I want to give you guys both a little bit of guidance because I've been seeing you both kind of just miss, and maybe Ooh. if you had a plus one Ooh. potentially to your attack or attack perception saving throw or a skill check. Hopefully awesome. attack. Great. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I guess maybe I can do it the same way to you with, like, my hair and a, <laughs> a, little, a, little, a little choking fun that we've consensually agreed to. <laughs> and we have a safe word for, which you have not said yet, so we're good. Um, and I just kind of maybe wave my hand in your general direction, uh, Aldo. <laughs> It is crazy. I'm seething. I'm Naira yet again. <laughs> Hoping this is maybe a little bit of a olive branch. Hey. Trees, right? All right. Nice My work, turn's Kate. over. Kate, are you done your turn? What? Are you done your turn? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you went to a different world for a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, uh, little side qu mini side quest within. Yeah. I think that, <laughs> I think that neck mouth is cutting off oxygen. I to think your brain. so too. <laughs> No, I think I'm more fun with the neck mouth on. <laughs> I like the neck mouth. Yeah. 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 It's a good neck mouth. It's a well-made neck mouth. It is really well-made. It's, it's very nice. Beautiful. It actually is. It's beautiful. <laughs> we should Thank you. Will you make more and we'll sell them? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So all Troy thinks he just sees it. He's like, yes. so Troy signs. So Troy's at his, uh, at his uh, 20 year high school reunion or whatever. And, uh, and they're like, so, uh, so you're an actor, right? He goes, no, we sell neck mouths. We sell neck mouths. <laughs> <laughs> neck mouths. I mainly deal with neck mouths. So where we got the idea from is. Security. All right. It's, uh, <laughs> this guy keeps talking about neck mouths. Uh, Aldo, you're up. Uh, all right. Aldo is going to imbibe his mutagen. He has a quicksilver mutagen. Okay. It's his first act. It's like, goop, goop, goop. And it's like, kuk, kuk. You hear this, like, cracking of his bones as they elongate. And he gets more angular and taller and more frail, but quicker. 
and with his second action, he's going to attempt to throw another another alchemist fire. Okay. All right, come on. Hit him with that fire! Okay, here we go. Uh, that is a 31 to hit. All right! Nice! That is a hit. Okay. Uh, that is 13 points of fire damage. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And two points of persistent fire oh, damage. That's huge. That is huge when he's weak. Oh, oh yeah. my god, that's so bad. Yeah. That, so you said 13 regular? Uh, yes. Holy shit. Okay, yeah. and then persistent fire fuck. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, anything else? All right, I'm going to try again. Please miss. Please miss. Yeah, that's a miss, but... That is four more points of splash fire damage. That's brutal. Oh you God. just keep yeah. taking Hell yeah. Yeah, that. Yeah. Aldo, you are so perfectly suited to destroy this thing. I it's amazing. Finally, you were due. Like, you were due. I've been waiting over a, years for this to happen. Like, If only we had been fighting our boreal enemies all along. <laughs> I know. Uh, where have been the trees, the tree enemies in my path? That to me, yeah. It's so funny to look at a tree and be like, finally. Finally. <laughs> can kill this thing. <laughs> um, is that it, good buddy? That's it. All right. Uh, it is now Ethel's turn to finish the round. Ethel, what do you do? I'm going to double slice. Hammer, and, hammer yes. and hatchet. Hammer and hatchet. Have you assigned a color die to each weapon? The green is the hatchet. <laughs> oh, oh, I oh. think... What was sorry. that? This is going to be a 24 with the hatchet and a uh, 22 with the war hammer. Okay. 24 into 22 is a miss, miss. Okay. Okay, and then I'll go again with the hatchet. He's natural a hatchet 20. named Molly. God damn it. It's a natural three on that. You are ice Ooh. cold, dude. Rough round for Ethel. Yeah. Really dude. Em- You're as cold as ice. Nice. I'm cold. <laughs> it's really embarrassing in front of your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to attempt to climb the tree again. Please oh stop. Oh, why are you doing Please that? Please stop climbing the tree. <laughs> <Just Please. laughs> okay. I'd rather you do nothing. When do you climb an enemy? Why, uh, it's when so when funny. do you ever climb your enemy? Don't talk to him. What kind of idiot are you? I'm not telling you. I'm just curious. Uh, yes, I'm going to climb the flaming tree. That's <laughs> a 32. A 32 out of Wow. Athletics. I hate playing with you guys. Uh, all right, so you start climbing the, the enemy. I, hope, I don't know why. I'm going to tr- try to get to my own face. Sure. Okay. This won't be Are weird. Are you going to kiss it? All right, it's round three. I'm going to kill all of you. Uh, all right, well, I've got some bad stuff about to happen at the end of this round, so I want to make it really count. And so I am going to do a three-action John. You no. see the heads, those those lumpy fruits that are actually heads start shaking and it almost looks like their craniums are expanding oh, fuck. and if there oh, was like no. a liquid in their cranium it's being infused into the tree branches and you see the trunk start to swell as uh-huh. well and then all of a sudden just like boom, 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 all of your brains are inundated with knowledge. Oh, Everybody no. roll a will save. Oh, oh my shit. God. Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, man. Come on, Atticus, you son of a bitch. Now. Don't screw this up. There's already been a lot of hero points that have been used, which makes me happy. I'm using, using I'm using a hero point. Oh. All right, Bottle Cap Jones. Um... Shit. Oh shit. Dude, Bottle Cap Jones just hit a homer. Yeah! Alright, he called the shot! Aldo, what did you roll? Uh uh 24. Okay. Ethel? 32. Okay. Uh Eris? A 19. And oh. because you taunted us, I don't know if I want to use my hero point for this. It's up to you. What do you want to so, do? So I don't know. What does everyone else think here? What does LA think? Yeah, use it? Yeah? yeah. Up? Don't Use be it. Yeah. Okay. Up. Okay. All right. Fine. Jesus Christ. I don't. Jesus. <laughs> All right. I, God. I guess, I, don't, I guess I'm wrong. Please stop talking to the audience. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you're gonna use your uh, cap. Seven, eight, oh. nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty-two. <laughs> Better. 
higher. It's I higher. Really it's higher. It's a it's a twenty nine for Atticus. I rolled a natty nineteen. It's there you a, go. And I'm not stupefied anymore because it's your turn. So it's a thirty six. Okay. I forgot what all of you rolled. <laughs> Twenty. Uh, Quick, everyone say it at the same time. Nineteen. No, 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 no. You rolled a twenty-nine. I did. You did. And Skid, what'd you roll? Uh, four. Twenty-four. Twenty-four, and you were thirty-two. Okay. So Suki and Ethel passed. The rest of you failed. Um, so. Regular success, you are, uh, Suki and Ethel, you are stunned one. Oh, no. And you take 12 points of mental damage. Oh, no. Oh, no. Too much knowledge. Oh, this is really bad. If you failed, which is... uh, Is that really what she thinks of me? (laughs) (laughs) Which is Eris, Aldo, and Atticus, you take 25 points of damage, and you're stunned three. Oh. Oh, Six booze. Stunned a three. You can't act. A stunned value indicates how many total actions you you lose. Yeah, we all three. know what stunned is. In case you didn't hear me, each time you regain actions, reduce the number of yours by your stunned value. So you guys are fucked. And 25 points of damage as the cherry on top. Now, please deal your persistent fire damage and your persistent negative energy damage, and I will roll the flat checks to try and remove both of them. First, for the negative energy damage, I'll roll a d20, and I roll a natty 18. Fuck. Fuck your damage. Fire damage, gonna roll this. Natural one. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, give me your... (laughs) Give me your 48. Uh, 24 points of damage. Nice. I'm nice. just imagining the tree trying to pat out the fire. Yeah, 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 with the it's heads. like slapping itself with branches. This is the bad one, though. This is the one that I really wanted to get rid of. How much damage? Uh, it's just two every every round. Okay, but it's a lot more because of its yeah. problems. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. That is the end of its turn. Uh, this, is, this is real, real bad for the people that are stunned three. But Suki, you passed. What do you do? Suki. Uh, Suki. Suki is going to... I'm going to hit you with my tendril, one of my fiery tendrils. Ooh. Yeah, fire. Let's, let's see if I can do it. Hit Folks. me with your best shot. Natty 15 for 23, uh, 33 math. <laughs> yeah. Just count that one more time. 33, it's a 15 plus 18. That's math. Yeah. yeah. That's math. That's, that's a math. Hit. That that's is a hit. Maths. That's okay. math. That is a hit, and that's that math. is math. I will agree that's with you. The way All right, it is. so that's 13 points of fire damage, <laughs> and you take 1d4 persistent. Yes! Wait. Yes! Huge! Three. Wait, how much damage did you do? Uh, what did I say? Four. Uh, fuck. Four. 15. 13, thank you. Six points of damage? 13, 13 points of okay. fire damage. 13 points. Oh, God, that's so much more. And then persistent. Three. All right, hold on. Then not until the end of its turn. Okay. Take your three and put it in a tree. All right, what else do you want to do? Uh, <laughs> attack again. With my second action, I attack again. Oh, oh fuck, I thought it was another 15. It's not. Uh, try <clears throat> 26. Miss. Cool. Your Honor. That's it. And then I'm stunned, so I lose my third action. Okay, okay. Now, do both persistent fire damages, where they're from two different sources and they're different, do, do I take both of I, them? I think it's... It is. Do you get both? Okay. This guy very incredulously they're said very yes. very confident I don't about like that. the way you said <laughs> yes, sir. He was like this, yes! Of course! You fucking dummy. Look, I thought it was just... That's what I felt when you made that face, sir. You have the book. I have it too. I just haven't cracked it open. <laughs> <laughs> it's so heavy. Is that a piece of cardboard you're using for a bookmark? It is. It's a to-do list. <laughs> it it's, says a, it's actually eggs, a very old milk. to-do list. It's, I've already been to the it's dentist. Like a cartoon to-do list. <laughs> but I do need to get my car details. <laughs> you 
You don't take both persistence. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was. Have this man escorted out. Security! <laughs> and <laughs> leave the book! You don't deserve it, sir. <laughs> Clearly you're reading the wrong book. What the hell is going on? It is Atticus's turn. Atticus, you are stunned three. Anything you'd like to say before we move on to someone else's turn? Well, the nice thing is... <laughs> Well, even starts though, drooling. Even if, like, our, if they don't stack, like, our damages, there's still two sources of fire damage that you have to do the flat check against. Yes. So that, but that only in the higher is one and is the higher calculated. One would, yeah. So put that on your to-do list towards the top. Yeah, put that on your put stupid that piece in of your cardboard. tree and smoke it. All right. Atticus shits his pants. Eris, you also failed. You're also stunned three. Yeah, so oh. I guess what I'll do with this round is... Uh, Lower my stun by one. Right? Yeah. Good. Good. Yes. Night. Wait. <laughs> you l- just take them all away. You're good. Oh, you. It doesn't go by one? You lose. You lost all three actions. Yeah. So. Oh, right. So yeah. you lost all three. Yeah. I lost all three actions. I-, I was making a joke. God. I thought it was very funny. <laughs> my turn's over. But now Everyone it's Aldo's turn. Everyone laugh for Kate. <laughs> Thanks, guys. This is a good studio audience. Yeah, this is great. So supportive. <laughs> that was so funny. All right, we're good. this is getting out of control. Aldo, you're stunned three as well. And so uh, then it goes to Ethel's turn. Right. So am I not stunned now? Yes. Okay. Thank Correct. You. Okay. You Ethel just lose stun- a turn. Ethel was stunned one. He loses an action. But luckily, I'm hasted. Thanks, Harris. Um, so it all evens out. Yeah. I'm going to double slice again. Okay. Green is the hatchet. I hope you fail. Okay, okay, okay. 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 It's a 39 on the Warhammer. Yeah. And a 31 on the hat. Yes! Give me the damage separately. And what type of damage is the Warhammer? Bludgeoning? Bl- bludgeoning. Okay. Um, okay, so the hatchet is going to be 12 points of axe damage. X don't give it to you. <laughs> get it on. All right. And we can, I'll give you the four still, I think that's really funny. It is. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna give it to you. It's very right, right, fucking funny. It's I don't give a humorous. fuck what everyone else 12, says. 12 points of uh, bludgeoning damage from the war hammer. You notice not all of that goes through. I figured. Uh, that said, I am going to flense you. Yeah. With my, with my final action. I don't like this. The tree's not probably not gonna bleed. It could bleed sap. I don't like this Maybe. Game. Yeah. But regardless, it's going to become flat-footed. Um, so you're going to take uh, 2d8 persistent bleed damage. Hey, 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 hey. Ah. What? I don't think you can do it, maybe? Why? Is it a strike? No, it's, a, it's another action. But your extra action can only be to stride or strike, right? I lost that action. The GM. <laughs> Wait, what do you? I wasn't listening. What do so you say? So I get. Hey, I'm, Hayes gives me the quicken condition, which means I get an extra action. I, er, I acquire an extra action being in my turn, right? That action can only be used to strike or strike. I lost an action because I'm stunned. Matthew okay. is a lawyer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I am loving it. And why are you saying you can't do it? I'm not. I'm convinced. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> tell me what you're We're tell sure. me what you're concerned about. I really like the way Matthew plays. Honestly, well, he no, did a double dance. slice action, which is two attacks with two actions as one combined damage source. Right. The second attack is a flens, it's not a strike. He can only additionally stride or strike. Because I presume the action he lost was one of his base actions. What he's saying is he decided to lose the action that's irrelevant. Get the fuck out of here, Kazakaza. Well, I also could say that my extra action was used on the double slice. So I think it's... it's, 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 it's that guy says, yep. Yeah. All right, flens away. Uh, Jury uh, of flens, away. flens away, and I will definitely remove the damage from the hero's hit points. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're going to take 2d8 persistent bleed damage okay. if you bleed. Type, 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 type. <laughs> it's going to be on your turn. Okay. Um, you also become flat-footed. Oh, no. And <laughs> so, Is that the first we heard the tree's voice? <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. 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 Oh,
And if you have any resistances to any physical damage, which it seems like you yes, do, I do, they're reduced by five. Wow! That wow! Was, oh, wow! You guys are getting better at this, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like it. Uh, all right, you done cheating? Yes. It is. Uh, it's a new round. It, we'll call it round four because that's what it is. It is the <laughs> tree's turn. Mm. Mm. Does it surrender? Mm. No, hold on. <laughs> Do the faces all go, we surrender. Yeah, it yeah. throws up its branches and, and that, uh, uh, like, surrender. Yeah. No. Let's parlay. Please. No. Here's what it's going to do. Fuck my Leave me ass. alone. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me be. Make like a tree. All right. <laughs> you know, if you, if you start clapping for puns, he's not going to stop. I know. <laughs> Believe me, I'm rooting for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Please. Please stop the puns. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is it's going to take its branch and it's going to try and, like, scrape... Ethel off. <laughs> By the way, did you climb this tree and then attack with two weapons? What were you holding the tree between your thighs? Yeah, like a yeah. tree surgeon. Yeah. It's like, yeah. His thighs Just, are pretty strong. How do you sleep <laughs> at night? Bending the rules. Don't ask how I know that. All right. That is a 32 to hit. Uh, yes, that hits. A couple things are going to happen. Oh, no. First thing is you're going to take a shitload of damage to the tune of 16 plus eight, 24 points of bludgeoning damage. Then I'm gonna use improved knockdown, where it just fucking knocks you off the tree. No! And you take another five points of damage as you hit the ground and land prone. Oh. Oh yeah. I'm mad. <laughs> and now I'm gonna branch you again because we're branching out to new attacks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just wanted to keep up. 26 to hit. Prone. Because I'm prone. That hits exactly. Oh, no! Sure does. Have you used my guidance yet? Yeah, I missed. Yeah, I, yeah, I missed. <laughs> oh, 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 so much damage. 33 points of damage. Just a fucking branch full of heads just goes. Oh, oh, oh my god! No. Then a branch is going to come. Actually, one of these creeping tangles is going to come out and try and pull Suki back into this briar I'm patch. So That's a lot of action. That's like your fourth action. It's my third action, and how dare you? <laughs> No, you scratched Ethel, then you knocked him off, then you scratched him again. The knock was free. It's improved knockdown. Whatever. <laughs> she, she must have thought it was regular knockdown. Yeah. I was thinking it's way better than the normal It's knockdown. a very common mistake. Uh, yeah. Third action. This vine is going to come out. Uh, spell attack roll. So it's going to have a little uh, multiple attack penalty. John, where's my spell attack? All right, here it is. You're going down, Suki. You're going down. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> 35 to hit. You're so That's mean. That's with a minus 10? You're so you? mean. Uh, yeah, I rolled, a, wait, 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 wait. I rolled, I rolled very, very high. It, you make, you're making everything up. I'm not. <laughs> it's obvious. I'm reading off of this It's not a, it's list. not a critical. Okay. It's a normal, regular, lame, old, whatever the fuck. Okay. Well, here's what happens. Uh, you don't take any damage, but you are pulled into the cre creepers. I'm on, I'm fire. I'm sorry. You're a plant. I'm a fire elemental. It's magic, and I don't care. You are immobilized for one round. Oh, no. Am I pulled into it like I'm here now? Yep, you're in the creepers. Oh, I'm over there? All right. You're a creep. Wait. Yeah. Now, it, now it's my turn. No, now it takes persistent damage. Yeah. Not Joe's, but yours. And mine. Well, and, my, and mine. And you're bleeding, yes, from your cheating. <laughs> Give me your bleeding damage. I'll roll the flat check. Natty 17, suck it. It was going to end the beginning of my turn anyway. 
Seven points of damage. Seven points of damage from the bleed. Definitely took that. Uh, and now, <laughs> Skid's fire. Natural one again. Yes! That's a whack out! How much fire damage, Skid? Uh, two, always. It's a lot more than that. Yeah. And then you roll a flat check against mine, too, right? There, oh, there he goes. Natty, 14. Yes! Just. Okay, roll to see if you get more than two. Yeah. Because I roll it. a d4. Do it! Yeah. yeah. Do it! That's a one. Okay, all right. It's fine. The, the only thing that's important is the two different sources of fire damage. That's all that's really... How's yeah. the tree looking? Beautiful. <laughs> The, ma- the most majestic tree Why you've ever I seen. Ask? <laughs> it's gorgeous. <laughs> cool. And it is your turn, Suki. Okay, Fuki. Excuse me. My name Fuki, is Fuki yes, I'm sorry. in this battle. And you renamed my character on the map. Fuki. <laughs> How'd you do that? Um, Magic. So I, you said I'm uh, grappled for a round? What'd You're you say? immobilized. Immobilized. You can attempt to escape, but you won't. Okay. And that takes the uh, that has the attack trait. So if you start doing that, it's going to affect your attack. Should you get out, I would just crawl uh, into a dark hole and skip your turn. So to escape, it's what my strength, my athletics, my uh, escape is a athletics, acrobatics, or unarmed athletics. I'll do my athletics. Okay, it's against its spell DC in this case. Twenty. Oh, no. That is a fail. So does that take all my actions then? No, that's just one action. The escape action is one. Here I go again. But it has the attack trait, so it's going to go down by minus five. five. Oh. Can I try? You just did. What did you roll? I don't remember because I picked it up so fast. How dare you? That's cheating. (laughs) I saw it. It doesn't matter what you rolled if you didn't roll a natural 20. You're not getting it. Third try. (laughs) That's just... Minus 10. uh, Right? Minus 8? Minus 10? I'm sure I'm going to get this one. Just tell me if you roll a natural 20. Nope. It's a fail. It's an 18. So you're just fighting against the creepers and you are stuck. It's shitty when you take a form because then you have to drop the form to do anything else to cast a spell. So yeah. this is all I can do. That's well, my turn. Well, druids suck. It's uh, Atticus's <laughs> turn. Oh. Yeah, I said it. <sighs> They're stupid characters. I hate druids. <laughs> uh, Atticus is like filled with all of this knowledge after spending a whole round. Just oh, like, wait, yeah. what did we learn? No, I am acting. <laughs> Please. I'm so sorry. Continue your scene. I'm so sorry I interrupted. Oh, my God. I'm so embarrassed. Uh, You were saying? I was going to say, what did Atticus learn? What's he learning? But do your acting. Do your acting. That's what Uh, I was doing. (laughs) You you feel like you absorbed a a surge of information that this tree has obtained throughout its, its entire life. So if it's been here hundreds of years, thousands of years, whatever, it has acquired so much knowledge and it just like hit you. It's so overwhelming, it doesn't even mean anything to you. Uh, But this is not the first time this has happened to him. So he's used, not used to, but he's experienced the influx of intense knowledge that he will later parse out. And as he just like finishes, he's like, his gaze just sets on this thing and he's like, you've made a terrible mistake. (laughs) You shared knowledge with the wrong rat. (laughs) If you want to be a tree of death, then die. And his eyes get crazy. And he's gonna cast a spell, maybe. Natural four. You gotta be shitting me. Uh, I'm gonna bottle cap it. Gotta bottle cap it. Have to, have to bottle cap it. Have to, Natty 15. There you go. Natty 15. And he unleashes the most powerful magic that he knows right now as nine separate magic missiles. Yes! Just shush, 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 yes! And just go, 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 go. I don't give a shit about the AC you made up. <laughs> you take 30 points of force oh, damage. The tree falls. Yeah! 
Sydney, I'm disappointed you didn't get up. <laughs> you scared me. left me hanging you out You scared me. That chair <laughs> went so far. That was really aggressive. <laughs> well, I was really yeah. stuck under here far, and I knew I had to do like one <laughs> to get it out fast. It turned into like a wrestling match so fast. You just picked it up. <laughs> As the tree falls, this tree, you realize, you remember somebody, I don't know if you had a shared vision or if it was only one of you, you've seen this tree before. You've seen this tree full of heads. You remember walking oh, yeah. with the count towards this oasis and seeing this tree. You had this vision of this. The tree falls, but as it falls, all of the heads begin to swell just as they did before it unleashed that attack. And as it dies, Every bit of knowledge this tree has ever soaked up explodes out in front of you. Everybody roll a will save. Oh, oh no. No, death throws. Oh, come on. Ethel could go down, man. If Ethel, <laughs> I think Ethel's brain is empty enough that he can absorb a little more knowledge. <laughs> Maybe not. I mean, yeah, it's wow. bad. Uh, let's start with the side of the table, Suki. 19. That's a critical fail. I rolled yeah. a natural two. Oh, yeah. Do you have a bottle cap? Oh, hero point. Bottle Fuck cap. It. Fuck you, you son them. of a I bitch. I hate them. They ruined just the game. Just got so mad they that I remembered. They the game. They it, just ruin your fun. Yes, same thing. So that's a 31. So gross. Don't worry, Troy. I got you. Sorry, what'd you get, buddy? 22. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Better. Uh, what about you, Kate? 28. Oh, Ooh, okay. is that bad? Mm-hmm. Uh, Matthew? You needn't have worried at all. I rolled a natural two for a 15. There it is. Oh, oh fuck. And no bottle cap left. I do have a bottle cap, but I don't want to ruin Troy's fun. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Don't um, say I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything for you. Um, <laughs> what about you, Skin? Uh, 28. Okay. Only one of you rolled over 30, right? All right, so you passed, but it wasn't a critical success. So you take... 24 points of damage. Oh, no. Oh, boy. You take 98 points of damage. I do? Uh, Matthew. <laughs> oh, Matt. Oh, okay. I have 55 hit points left. So you're dying, too. You're dying, dying too. too. Okay. The rest of you take 49 points of damage. Oh, my God. This is awesome. This is... I just love the idea of knowledge being so damaging. It like destroys your mind. It's amazing. A couple things happen at this point. You see Ethel fall, right? I mean, I was already down on the ground. You threw me off the tree. And <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and then hit but maybe me you were the... just about to get up and boom, it, it blow you back. In fact, anybody who failed that save gets knocked prone by the, the, the onslaught of knowledge. And Ethel, you're on the ground and you're, you're out and you, you know, you're unconscious. And you, you guys start to regain your composure and you look over and you notice that Ethel is not getting up. And then you watch Ethel start to like shake like back and forth, like his body is being lifted off the ground. He's shaking, and it almost looked like he's a puppet being pulled by an invisible string. He's just shaking, shaking, shaking. (laughs) And as he's shaking, he begins to like phase out of existence. Oh no. And as he's phasing out of existence, another figure starts to appear where he's standing, and that figure is like shaking. That figure is doing the shaking, and then that figure shows up, and it's Tiny Murder Clown. Oh, no! (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) The other thing that happens is that the door to the hut opens up. And a man begins to step out, holding a large tome under his hand. And we will see you in Seattle. Ah!